Our story started in the mid-90s when Khalid moved to the Sultanate and came to realize the riches of the Omani wilderness, a discovery that has brought him to re-embrace his love of nature and the outdoors. I was really a person completely, uh, I would say, oriented to the sea and to the, to the water. His first caving trip along with professional mountaineers triggered his new passion for exploration. This trip, I all the time talk about it because it was the first time ever in my life I do a real trekking. It was the first time in my life I do caving. It was the first my time of my life I see a climbing rope. So it was really the very beginning of, uh, uh, I would say, a love story between uh, me and uh, the mountains, the wadis and the caves of Oman. time consider it as the beginner's luck I found inside this cave an extraordinary chamber you know I just went inside with these professional guys and then while they were having a small break somewhere uh, they allowed me to go and explore uh, one, 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 one tunnel I would say one tube and I just squeezed my head into a hole and there was just, the, 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 I don't know, it's a firework. Another huge chamber just opening with calcite with, with, with some formations that I've never seen in my life with, with these, uh, what we call helictite, these very thin uh, kind of uh, calcite formation that grow against, I would say, the laws of gravity. They grow just horizontally from, from, from the stalactites and stalagmites. I was like, wow, I mean, this is unreal. <laughs> I am very close to nature. I am very close to sports. I like to share. Anything which is nice, anything which is beautiful, anything which is tasty with others, because I, it, when I see others happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Along the years, Khalid built an experience in mountaineering and started exploring uncharted canyons with his family and friends. Canyoning is, is, a, is a new um, um, activity, I think, outdoor activity, uh, that, which is really very interesting and very pleasant because it's involving a lot of different activities in the same time. And by that I mean that when you do a canyon, uh, you can expect pools to swim, you can expect waterfalls to upsail, you can expect a small wall to climb, and of course trekking, and uh, on the top of, uh, of that, you have to have a good sense of orientation to know where you go and how to go to reach your destination. Because canyoning uh, basically is to cross a part or entirely a canyon following the wadi bed or the, canyon, the canyon's bed. So here I'm just having a quick look on the canyon we are going to visit uh, tomorrow with some friends. And it's in, in, in an area called the Jabal Akhtar. It's uh, the um, uh, western Hajar, or it's the western uh, chain of mountains uh, of Oman. And uh, where you have also the, the, the highest uh, point, which is uh, Jabal Shams at 3,000 Zero zero nine meters.
هذا آه. الماء اول كان يستغلوه الاهالي في فري المزروعات نعم بيجمع في هذا الفرق اول شيء طبعا سلطانه عمان معروفه بانظمه الري التقليديه اللي هي الافلاق وهي اللي تغذي او تروي معظم واحات النخيل في السلطنه في كل مرة أمشي من خلال الأودية هذه أكتشف مواقع جدا جميلة وجدا رائعة وحقيقة الواحد يستمتع فيها ويجب مثل ما أسلفت يجب أن نتركها نظيفة وأيضا نحاول بقدر ما نستطيع أن نحافظ على على مكونات المكونات البيئية الفريدة التي تتمتع بها هذه الأودية وهذه الجبال هم عشان منزل منازل شيابهم ويشوف المكان ويطلع عليه ويعرفوا عنا بندربهم يعني وهم من صغار يعرفوا ان مكانهم هذا ويعاشر جدادهم وابواتهم في هذا المكان وعشان بعدين اذا تعالى اخذنا من الحياه زين يظلوا ان عندهم نمضى عن هذا المكان ما من تركوا الشياب يعني كانوا شياب بهاي سقيو شياب تركوا هذه البلاد يعني عثروا والشباب اللي طلع ما يشتغلوا بهذه الشغله وانا طلعت بشياب ودرت اسقي وكذا خويت هذه المهنه ودرت اسقي حتى على الناس جماعتنا كامله نسقي لهم اسقي المزارات وير ايفر ووتر ايز ذير بيبول يو ويل فايند سو يو كان سي ذيس ذا ليفل اوف ووتر يو نو ديكريزينغ ويتش كوز اجين ام limitation in farming then people will just abandon the, the place and just go to somewhere else to find their life um, and we can see many if, when you walk here you see many abandoned villages and you will and try to understand why being abandoned you will find out that there, is, there was a water some in, in some time but finished Le danger, des fois, tu as un, 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 du beau temps, là où tu es, et puis au fait, euh, il pleut à je ne sais pas combien de kilomètres sur le plateau, ju plateau justement, et ce, que, ce canyon là dans, dans lequel tu te retrouves, il draine donc justement cette immense surface de terre qui, 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 qui n'absorbe ne, qui ne, qui pas l'eau, 
Tu as tout l'eau qui, qui, qui se met dans ton, dans ton canyon et puis l'eau, elle monte pas vite, elle monte très vite. Et puis tu n'as aucune chance de l'en tirer. Aucune. Donc j'arrête pas de mentionner cet accident qui a eu lieu en 95, juillet 95. J'étais en Oman, c'était pratiquement mon premier voyage en tant que, que médecin, médecin visiteur dans le pays. Et il y a eu 12 morts dans un seul canyon en un jour à cause de, à cause de la crue. Des cascades qui coulaient de ces falaises qui font peut-être 600 mètres de haut et qui partaient toutes dans, dans, dans le lit de, du canyon là où on est là. Et puis on voyait que bon, l'eau elle coulait tout doucement dans le, dans le lit sans vraiment nous, euh, nous inquiéter. Et euh, moi je dirais dans l'espace de quelques secondes qu'il y a notre ami Hamis qui est de, de, de Ongbir, donc du, du, du village où on est, qui a commencé à hurler, euh, il commençait à m'appeler, moi je ne savais pas pourquoi. Et puis le temps de réaliser que c'était euh, l'arrivée de la vague. Et quand je dis l'arrivée de la vague, c'est l'eau du, 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 du canyon qui, qui montait à vue d'œil euh, de, je dirais, quelques centimètres à peut-être, euh, je ne sais pas moi, 1,50 m d'eau sur euh, une largeur de 25-30 mètres. This is actually Wadi Tiwi, where it reaches the, the sea. This is the exit of Wadi Tiwi to the sea. So if you go backwards, back, 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 you reach the amphitheater where you have the village of Amkbir. So basically, when you start in Amkbir, You need around, uh, I would say, 11 to 14 hours to get out of the canyon. This place is really extraordinary because uh, lo looking down in the valley, uh, we feel like we are looking on the, on the satellite pictures that we see on Google Earth at home. It's um, exactly the same feeling. And uh, the, the amphitheater is just um, immense. And uh, the cliffs that we can see above Amkbir, uh, I think they have approximately 500 meters in height. And here, the difference of heights where I'm standing and uh, the village of Ambir is approximately 1,000 meters. We can see down in the valley, there's the, 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 the road that leads to Ambir that is unfortunately broken because of the, uh, of the, of the rain. So basically, we'll, we'll, we'll have to reach a place called uh, al Wilja, another village, where we have to take donkeys to carry all our material to be able to reach Amq and uh, then to get into the canyon and uh, enjoy the beauty of uh, Wadi Tiwi. We got to our place and we're safe and sound and we have the stars, which are all above us and it's really beautiful. Alors c'est ton premier ta première approche à pied dans Wadi Tiwi. Ouais. C'est pas mal. 
Tu pourras dire que tu as fait tri win intégral. So today, finally, we managed to reach Amr Khbir and Wadi Tiwi in its, I would say, a normal uh, situation or state, because the last time we came, it was flooded. It was something like I've never seen before in Tiwi in the last, I would say, 15 years since I come here. So you see, this is my anchorage that we fixed around, uh, I would say, seven years ago. And uh, okay, you, you can look, it's really protected from the flow of the water, so it won't get destroyed. If you compare it to the other anchors, which are on the other side, they have been completely exposed by the uh, rocks probably falling from the top and the water, so they are exposed to the flow of the water. That's why they are a little bit kind of in a bad shape. And this one, you can see that there's nothing, um, how we say, blocked on it, uh, uh, grass or whatever, because it's protected from the flow of the water, from the wadi bed and from the cliff, because there's an overhang just, just above the anchor. This is my beloved anchor. See you there. For me, the mouth is like the mother, you know, mother of everything. Um, the water is here. Um, the greeneries are here. The, the life is here, actually. It started from the mountains and just went outside. Woo! Welcome to what is I consider, I think, myself as a part of a whole. So, and uh, I am linked to the other people. So I, I don't consider myself as a, as one person. No, I, I, I consider myself as a part of an entity. And uh, yeah, I think that. What else I can say? So now we are in Wadi Qasha. Actually, we, uh, we we were delayed for technical problems, and now we are heading to our uh, bivouac, which is around 10 minutes away from here. So with our headlamps, now again we are experiment. Uh, we are experiencing one more night uh, uh, bouldering in uh, in Oman. So. Let's go.
C'est sûr qu'on s'éclate à, à, à bouger, à, à marcher dans le voilier ou n'importe, à découvrir les, les, la montagne, les, les voilis. Mais ce qui est intéressant, c'est qu'on est, on est seul. Donc c'est, tu découvres, des, c'est pas seulement que, que c'est de la découverte, mais on est, on est seul au monde. T'as, t'as personne derrière, c'est pas comme euh, n'importe où euh, ailleurs. Tu vas dans le monde où tu, tu, tu fais des, des, tu te balades en montagne. Il y a, y, a, y a plein de monde autour. Ici, ça, ça risque pas d'arriver les endroits où nous on va. Il y a encore personne. The only problem is that for drinking water, there is a spring in the drop, and I don't want to do it now because I will. Ah, we have enough water for drink. Okay, great. Then, anyway, this water I will drink, and it's running water, there's no problem. You can boil that anyway. Yeah, exactly. Pas de problème! Yes! Apéro! Je ramène six? Mais il n'y a rien là, Kevin. Du bœuf? Que du bœuf, bœuf. Bœuf, ok. Il y a quatre encore. They are the crazy family. That's their uh, nickname, Majanin. I only found out about recently. And it's great to be able to. Uh, to come out here and experience this uh, this beauty in this part of the world with this fantastic family. Family of four, mother, father, daughter, son. Good. I think all families should, um, should bond um, doing similar things. Um, yeah, seeing the beauty of the world and getting into a bit of adventure together is great. And it's good to be in the nature. It it cleaning, you know. It's just try to make you more fresh. Um, it will help you also to set your mind. When you go back to the cities, you can you can be more focused. You know, that's again something that we learn. You learn a lot of how to manage yourself, how to manage the people, how to manage your tools. You know, we do a lot of uh, risk analysis in our mind there, you know, in doing things. So it's really very helpful. These skills, you cannot just go and find it in the in the cities or attend the course, no. You have to be there. You have to be in that situation to capture the skills more and more. So I... Um, I think we are grateful to this mountain because it gives us more and more. Still, we didn't give anything to the mountain. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Oui, on explore. C'est, c'est, c'est... Papa s'y est mis il y a quelques années. Il a, comm... il a commencé à... à ouvrir des canyons et à... et à partir à rechercher en fait des nouveaux endroits à visiter. Donc. Euh... On s'y est un peu tous mis et c'était, ouais, on a été pionniers dans certains endroits mais, et c'était assez sympa. Que le Mans, oui, c'est, c'est particulier, c'est, c'est, c'est encore très peu découvert, c'est très peu, très peu visité relativement. Donc euh, c'est vrai qu'il n'y a pas beaucoup de monde, c'est facile de se retrouver tout seul, isolé, euh, en partant pour, quand on part camper, quand on part euh, en vadrouille, c'est vrai que c'est très sympathique de se retrouver euh, tout seul, dans des endroits assez reculés. Je 
Je l'ai fait, j'avais 15 ans la première fois, je crois, le rappel. <rire> Il y a la photo dans le premier bouquin de Chopin. Une fois que je suis sur la corde, ça me dérange pas. Je me sens, je me sens maintenue et j'ai pas de problème. But it's number one the beauty of the of the of the of the of the place, and I all the time like and love to compare the human being to nature. So I try, I want a person to be there just to show how small we are in front of this amazing thing. So now we are setting the, uh, the 120 meters drop of the seventh hole. Uh, so this is a rope of 200 meters. Now Khal is on the other side. Actually, I prefer to prepare my knot from here because the anchor is around 10 meters below. So I just throw the rope to just to measure where I have to make my knot. And Khal will tell me. Shift the anchor, Khalid. You can see it? انت بعيد عن هذا الرينج ب 1 متر تقريبا او اكثر شويه. Of the ring. اي. But from the الحبل هذا الحبل هذا متر وشويه. Okay, tell me if this one is at the level. I have grown very fond of this country and my greatest wish is for the new generation to discover, appreciate and preserve the beauty of Oman. I'm tired of being 